hoses. Pretty good. All right, you guys. Well, we managed to drive the car around a little bit, but uh, we very quickly overheated. We haven't even looked here yet in the radiator. So this is gonna be the first time taking this off. First time it's been opened in years. Ah, there. There it goes. You're Finally. gravy. Huh? It's got a really strong spring on it still. Oh, cool. Yeah. And yeah, look what we got down in here. Oh yeah. Look down inside here. Oh, she's empty. Wait. This is a very thirsty car. Well, we'll solve that. Yep. I'm right here. Okay. So this car says it holds about 10 quarts or well closer to 11 quarts. I'm gonna get a funnel. All right. Put one of these jugs in here. Whoa, it's green. Yeah. I expected it to be blue. Yeah, it's classic. I expected it to be This is clean. classic color of antifreeze. Really? Also, this stuff tastes oh, sweet. And uh, unfortunately, real? people leak it on the streets, and then animals like dogs and cats will lick it up and it'll poison them. Is it poison? It is poisonous. I mean, if you drink it, so don't drink it. Yeah, it's not. Designed to be drinking. It is not for drinking, yeah. Left somebody mistaken that in front of you. you better call poison control because it might kill you. The funny thing is, some it. of the ingredients that's in this is used as food additives, too. Huh. Sweater. Sweater. Oh, now it's all the way full. Yeah, it's completely full. But the engine block has not got any anything in it. So. What I do is we're going to start the engine and let it warm up and then once that thermostat opens it'll start it'll let it start pumping through there and then we can start adding water to top it off. Okay. Uh, Alright, well, why don't you try starting the car. First of all, pull the choke back. Okay. And when it starts, get ready to push it forward because it'll be like a Okay, you got the choke push, pulled back. Uh -huh. Okay, turn the keys to on. All the way to the on position. You'll hear, the, you'll hear the fuel pump. There it is. Now give the gas pump like tunka tunka. The gas pedal. Just give it a couple. Yeah, one more. Okay. Is it in neutral? Um, yes. Okay. Then hit the start button.
something about these carbs too. They're not balanced right. It's not one to run right. Yeah, the temperature is going crazy now that we're actually moving here. All right, well let's put her back. Yep. Back in the garage. We're gonna. I'm gonna say I'm, I hesitate to get into these carbs because I know they're gonna be a pain in the butt. But. I need you to find the dipstick and pull it out and check the level. Okay, so I think... I can see it right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, that's, the, that's where you fill the oil up, but the dipstick is lower on the engine. It's got a little round handle, just big enough to put your finger through. I'm looking right at it. It's on this side of the engine block. This way? It's on this side, yeah. Okay. Close. Um, That's oh, actually, right yes. It might be hot. Pull it straight out. There you go. Help. Yep. Just because this engine just ran. Right. Okay. Now you're going to want to wipe the oil off the end of that. Pump this in. Mm -hmm. And stick it back in. All the way. And then pull it back out. And, and hold it horizontal real quick so you're not in the hole buddy it's up above that it's up above that remember it was above this thing you see it look behind there look down you see yes that's it get her in there now okay now all the way down to oh dude i told you it's hot <laughs> We just ran that engine until it got hot, hot, hot. Okay, push it all the way. Now you gotta push it all the way down in. Okay. okay, now pull it all the way up and then turn it sideways quickly so you can see how much oil is on it. Barely any. Yeah. It does appear to be a little low. Quart low. No, that's all right. Still some on the dipstick. That's a, that's a good sign. <laughs> okay, we'll put Magnetic. Her... Magnetic, yep. Okay, we'll put her all the way back down in the hole there and press her in. There you go. All right, good work. All right, Nash is down there jacking this thing up so we can get underneath there and change the oil. We're gonna have to do it. You might as well do it now. Go ahead, just keep keep lifting. It needs to come up a ways to get underneath there. Keep going. You got a long way to go. It's hard to drag up. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, every it's the beauty of the the jack is it multiplies your force for you. Allows one person to look. Yep. Just Don't like me want. just like me pulling the donut truck around the yard as I come along. It's enormously heavy, it's stuck hard. But I got it. Get it? Good. Yeah, now you're, now you're getting up there. Is the wheel off the ground yet? No. Nope. Man. Right Close. You think this thing? Yeah, it's just like, it's just a little, I Keep going. Keep, keep going. Keep going. There you go. You almost got it. It looks like it's just spinning like, Yeah, it's off the ground now. Okay. Just look her, okay. There you go. <laughs> Alright, that's probably good. Alright, do you see so the drain plug? Right there. Where? I think. 
there's you can see this right here that little knob looking thing that is it green plug that is it okay i'm gonna it's a big old honking plug too yeah i thought it would be like a 16 or something but that looks big hey, hey moses can you run and see if you can get yeah. like maybe a size 18 mm. that might be all right stinky can you get up under there let's see i think so you think you can pull that off there? You might not be able to break it. Okay, I'm gonna see. This angle, I need to push it down, right? It'd be, yeah, you, well, you need to push it up from this side. Oh, yeah. Because it's kind of, it's lucky, Lucy. Try using the other end of the wrench. Put the round end on there, it'll stay on better. That is true. Turn it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn no, turn it over, dude. There you go. You got it. You're on there. I don't know if you're going to have enough muscle to get it, dude. Yeah, let me get under there and break it for you, dude. Yeah. Fat butt under there. This is another thing with monkey arms are quite Yeah, having long arms is useful as I'm doing this kind of stuff. Your arms are pretty long, though. Okay, well, I'm gonna try to get up under there and bust that loose. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could probably just screw it out with your fingers now, but it's gonna be kind of hot. Because it just ran. Yeah. Well, it's good to be, get. I'm guessing this may be kind of black. -ish. Probably. Because it's been sitting for Is the years. pan where it needs to be to catch it? Probably. I'm guessing that might be about good. Well, just be ready to move the pan real quick when oh, that yeah, oil that starts. Oh, yeah, that is hot starts coming out it's of there. It's oil. Yep. Not the best thing you want to get on your skin. Well, yeah. Okay. It's just, this, it's, the oil itself is going to be even hotter. Yeah. Okay. Reach and just touch the plug with your finger for a second. See if you can, can you stand to touch it? For like three seconds. Yeah. Well, you get it out really fast if you just like quick, 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 blip, blip, see? Okay. And be ready to adjust that bucket underneath your, your hands are going to get oily just accept that now i, I know okay I know it. <laughs> just be just be okay with it there you go so close it's getting there let's see if I can. just use your fingers dude i know but it's it'll it'll be way faster and it's not going to burn if you just keep doing it just just look oh oh, oh, oh. okay quick 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 get it out of there there wow. it is oh and right into the thing too Man, you guessed that just right. Yeah. Yeah, see, look at that. Looks there. like a laminar flow. You got some it's laminar what? flow going. Yep. It it smells like gold oil. Is that her? Yeah, it looks pretty okay. dark. Thank you. But I'm not surprised in the least at that. No, not at all. This is say, basic job on a car. See, the car has been parked seven years. God only knows how long before that it was that the oil was changed. So we'll just let that so, do its biz. This is oils, most likely seven plus years old. And then uh, we're gonna let that drain out a little bit and then we'll hop up and take the oil filter out, which we can do actually from the engine compartment, which is yeah, nice. Which is, it's not that far down. Oh, that's so, that's a blessing. Okay, and this looks like it has, the oil filter has a, oh, I thought maybe it would be super cool if they put a, uh, thing on top that you could wrench on with the same size wrench as the uh, oil plug but no dice too much to ask for they did put a a thing you can turn with a wrench on there but it takes something bigger than a 22 and that's awful big Nash has got a new oil filter over there from Wix not like, Fram not Fram <laughs> this is anti-paid placement yeah <laughs> Okay, hold on a second. Now there's something you gotta do before you put on a new filter. Oh, but, but turn it over. Don't do that. This is your rubber gasket. It's important. Oh uh, yeah, you have to put a little oil. You have to put a little oil around. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Nash has the new bottle of Rotella. Again, this is not a sponsored thing or anything, no. but so you can I, actually just get a little. I've had lots thing. of older vehicles from the pre omitted days, and and uh, this oil has always served me well. Let me get just a little bit of it there. Oh, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Oh, hang on to it. Yeah. yeah, that makes, that 
that liquid there helps make a nice suction. Makes a good seal, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. All right, we're gonna, you think you can screw it back on there? Do you see where it goes? <laughs> Here, hold right on, there. hold on a second. Okay, you see where it goes down there? Yeah. Can you reach it though? No. No? Almost here. Almost here. You're so close. You, your arms are monkey y, but not. <laughs> not I'm monkeyer. I have monkey seniority. Okay. And on these, you just want to. You just want to cinch them up hand tight and then just like one more oomph. Uh -huh. If you do it too much. Tight, just a little more. Yeah. Because if you do it too much, you'll crush that gasket and you'll end up leaking. So hand tight and then there we go. There we go. Yeah. It looks like Ooh. someone has put, this is like a flush and fill kit for the radiator. <laughs> someone has put in here at some point to flush that out before. And yeah, some, new sparks also will be necessary. Yeah, we'll put new plugs in. All right, let's put some oil in this thing. Can you get it? Careful, careful, careful. Yep. Getting started. There you go. Is this whole thing? Okay, yeah, it, it just go gentle. I know it's heavy. Yep. You're doing it. You're getting a workout in today, kid. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to be feeling that. Tomorrow. Yep. It's going in pretty quick. This whole thing, five whole quarts. Look at there. And, so and then much try. Much syrupier than modern car oil. Yeah. Yeah, my Ford takes like 0W20, and this is like 20W50, I think, or 20W40. Yeah, oh, 1540. Okay. Ta-da! Oil changed. Can you carry that fender? Can you get it? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll bring it here. We'll put the hood in first if that's how it needs to go. All right. Well, we just had like a little week break here. We got a lot of other stuff going on. It's summertime. But, uh, we were ready to hop back to it. Uh, my shoulder's feeling better after I goofed yeah. it up messing with the gas tank. So, you know, the old man's not as spry as he used to be. Anyhow, we got several tasks that we're gonna try to get in here in the next day or two. Uh, first and foremost among them, uh, well, not foremost, but first anyway, we're gonna go ahead and check these old spark plugs and see how they look. And we got some new ones to put in there. Sign that these boots are ready to, to be swapped out too. We can actually check those with my voltmeter to see how good they are, but it's probably, probably be best if we just went ahead and just planned yep. on getting a new set yeah. all together. So I'm gonna get Nash in there cracking on these and uh, we'll see, we can, we can check the plugs and see how they look too. All right, well, Nash has got the old spark plug socket on there and he's gonna start taking these puppies out here if he can crack them loose. We'll see. You gotta get it all the way down on the seat it on there. Is it in? Yep. Yep, there you go. Okay, you're gonna find probably more luck if you hold on a second. If you turn the socket over this way. You can press down on it and get some get more weight on it that way. Put your other arm underneath the holder. There you go. You get it? He's trying. Hey, did you bust it loose? Yeah. All right, look at there, kid. A little muscle power going. Yeah. Yeah, good work. You think you were gonna get that? Maybe, I don't know. For a second there, I, was, I wasn't sure you were gonna make it, but you did. Nicely done. Yep. And like I say, these spark plug sockets have the little rubber boot inside there that kind of yes. helps hold on. Yeah, kind of helps hold the plug as you pull it out. By now, you could probably just turn the you could just turn the socket with your oh, here. Look, look. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, you could just turn it with your hand. And the whole thing will all come out in one with the spark plug nestled in the socket. So there it is. On. Yep, you can and see right there, that little spark actually goes. Mm-hmm. And you can see, uh, well, I don't know if we could see here in the video, it's, it's not too bad. It's not real burned. It's not real greasy. But it's going to need to be replaced anyway. <coughs> yeah, we're going to swap them out. But, it's like, you can tell a lot about how an engine's running, like, looking at the how, how the electrode and stuff here looks. And say, this is a, 
It's not so bad, it's about average, I'd say. It doesn't look like it's been uh, damaged or, you know, sopping in oil or anything like that, so. All right, well, we're gonna get a new plug out and we're gonna adjust it uh, as, uh, as necessary and then put it back in the hole and we'll do five more, right? Yep. Okay. All right, now these plugs that we took out here are more the modern style with this little pointy little uh, electrode there in the center. Uh, like the iridium or whatever they call it. Uh, this is kind of like the ones that are in my, my, I have a 2014 Ford Fusion hybrid and we changed the plugs in that a while back mm -hmm. and it has these little pointy ones. Now this, what we're putting in here, this champions we're putting in today, see how the electrode is flat in the middle? Uh -huh. That's what your old man is more accustomed to. That's like the old style. This is what spark plugs always look like in my lifetime. When we so did the ones in the Ford like this, I was surprised at this little pointy little deal in the middle there. So, so that you could see that these are probably most likely been replaced before. Oh yeah, that, definitely those have been because these they're pointy and not flat right there. You're correct. So, so our spec is between a 30 and 34 on this. So I've, I got 34 or between 30 and 35. I got a 34 here, and you see how it won't fit in there, right? It's be a little smaller. So we need to we need to open this up a little bit. Yep. Just get you a little screwdriver and put the tip in there and just, just pry it out just a little bit. There we go. Now let's see what we got. It should open. Oh, that's too much. It's too wide. See how it just goes in there and you can clatter it around. So what I'm gonna do is I just take and just kind of tap it back down just a little bit. You want this just to barely drag. You want it just to barely drag in there. So yeah, I'm just I'm just pushing this back down just to bend it just a little. You don't want to go crazy. Oh, now it's, like, it's getting it's there. Like I when I put this in there, you want to feel it dragging on both sides of the of the feeler. That's why they call it a feeler gauge. You want to feel it. Ah, right there. I'm going in. I can feel it on both sides, but look, it goes in and it just barely drags, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's, so that's, that's just about right. That's what you want to see. Okay, so now, so now we just got to put this in. Put it back in the hole if you can. Yeah, and then just be gentle with it getting it started. You don't want to cross thread it in there. Just like, just gently turn it around until you feel that it's catching in there. And then you can start turning it. Sometimes they're a little stubborn to get started. Yeah, I think you got to go in there. Give it the old dad snug. I don't think you're turning it anymore. I don't think you're on, dude. Here, let me see. I think you, I think you backed off of it. There. Well, pretty tight. And there we go. There we go. That's about enough. Now, put the boot back on it. Okay, where's the Right down in there. Right here. Push it on Push until it you on. feel it. You hear it. it should make like a little click, ideally, when you get it. Because there's a little metal socket up in there. It snaps onto the end of that. Feel it? Yeah, let me see. Yeah, I think it is. I think that's on. Okay, next one. Let's see if we can get it off there. Yeah. Okay. This there you go, kid. One. carburetors adjusted I've done a bunch of online research and stuff here and so I'm, I'm just doing my best to get them set up to a baseline level where we can start adjusting them in from there so I've taken the dash pot off the top of this one uh, so that I can absolutely set the jet to the right height there to start and I'm gonna do the same on the back one here I'm gonna go ahead and clean this stuff up while I got it apart well we had a little break we took a little family vacation and uh, took a minute to regroup and uh, now we're back out here in the garage with Project Z. When we left off, we were having uh, trouble with the carburetors. The, the four carburetor, the front one there is just sucking air like crazy and I can't dial it down. But the right one 
not really sucking very much air at all. And uh, my way of thinking was that something was wrong with the four one. But then a friend of mine who's done a lot of twin carb stuff said, well, maybe the back end of the engine, maybe the, one of these three cylinders here is just not producing enough vacuum. And that's why it's not sucking as hard. Maybe it's not the front one that's the problem, maybe it's the back one. And he asked, well, have you done a compression test? And I said, I have not done a compression test. So we got a kit to do that so exactly. So we picked up a compression tester because I did not have one already. Um, so we got a compression test uh, kit and uh, we swapped the plugs out a while back. We're gonna go ahead and pull those out to do this compression test. And when we put them back in, we got a new wire set too. So we're gonna get into that. And what is this for Moses? start the car. Yeah, we got a remote starter set up too, finally, it would make this easier. So, uh, without further ado, <laughs> we're going to get into it right now. Well, we're at the main yep. This is the easiest way to do it one at a time, that way you don't get the wires mixed up either. Yeah, you don't want to get the wires mixed up. You know, it'll, there's a lot of explosions coming out of your carburetors and stuff. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to get this... Uh, of what you want. The really explosion is. is supposed to happen in here. Inside. Not in here. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, this is our, yeah, this is our gauge here. Connected to this? Mm-hmm. I'm going to connect to this hose. And then what are these things Hold for? on, just hang on just a second. Okay. Let's hold it up against here tight. Okay, crank it and see what we got. So yeah, we're just shy of 150 there. I mean, yeah. it's like that's a lot better. Yeah, 130, 140. It's like 147. So yeah. let's do that. One. Number six. I'm gonna call that just shy of 150. Just less than 150. Okay. okay. Now it's time to get the wire out of here. And so find where it goes on the distributor. So right wire. Yeah, and that's the deal. We're going to match it to okay. the one that's the same length here. Okay. It's this one right here. And that, so and it connects to this I try to wiggle it a little bit when you pull it off the boot there. There you go. You got it. Sometimes they can be a little stubborn. Got it? Okay, now we need to find a new one that's about the same length. That one's too short. This wire set should correspond to this car. This is the part number for it. Yeah, see, one of these wires oh, a weird bend. has a bend in it. Why did, why did only one? Is this the... Maybe it's because it has to actually, like, make Because it's the longest bend. one? Yeah. Yeah, it might be the deal. So maybe this one wasn't, like, an aftermarket one. Remember, I thought this one was different yeah. than the Maybe that's just the way this wire set's made. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's because it has to make the longest, so it actually has to, like, turn it in there. Yeah, and it's just to keep you from yeah. having the wire. Because, you know, having when you have it, a wire like, at a bend... bend because then it's a, it's a, it's a hazard to actually like break the actual part of your you're correct your spark plug. It's not good. All yeah. right, let's put this back in there. Yeah. And then we'll. This is a new wire, right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We started. good compression across the board there almost every cylinder was within five pounds of 150 psi so that's really great um, and that tells me that maybe uh, you know my friend was uh, saying that maybe I'd had like a hold piston or a stuck valve or something like that which would be terrible and but I, it, they all seem to be like almost in sync. We've got really good, uh, we've got strong compression across all six cylinders. So that's that's a plus and that's something that you know, we don't have to worry about so much. I, uh, I am thinking though that I'm just going to have to end up taking these carburetors off and rebuilding them completely and putting them back together. Um, it's a big pain in the butt, but it's something that you're going to have to do anyway eventually. So, All right, well, 
I've we keep goofing around with this. I've got the mixtures on these carbs set to where I think they're really good. I've took the tops off of them, refilled them with oil, adjusted them all down to their baseline, and then kind of dialed them in to where they sound individually like they're running really good. But it's just this one's sucking a ton of air through it. This one isn't. And even when I back the throttle uh, screws and stops all the way out on both these carbs, now suddenly it just wants to run at like 2,500 RPM as the base idle. And I, I can't get it to go down any lower than that. So if any of you guys out there in YouTube land have experience with these kind of carburetors and this kind of setup, and maybe can see something obvious that we don't, we would love to hear about it, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, we're all ears. I think we're going to close this video off. We will include like a photograph here of what we got going on, maybe a little video of the car running, so you can kind of see what I what I mean. And uh, you know, leave a comment. Let us know what's up. Uh, we look forward to getting over this hump. Like I say, I know we'll probably end up having to take these off and rebuild them. I'm that's in the pipe for that's sure. Joy. But I'm just hoping that right now we don't have to do that. If we can just get them dialed into a baseline level where the car will run decently, then you know down the line we can do that. But for now, we just want to know if, if like we're missing something that's simple, or if we've got a problem that we need to address. If you know the answer, let us know. Thanks very much. Now time for the Ox Studio sing song. Da na na, Ox Studio. Ox Studio. I'm gonna fire it up for a minute just to get some video here. So here is the engine running at idle now. So you can turn the throttle screws down. These are all the way down on both sides. You can see how loose.